This is a video to look at the reaction between magnesium ribbon and dilute hydrochloric acid. The magnesium reacts with the dilute hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride solution and hydrogen gas. In this experiment, we can look at the relationship between the mass of magnesium used and the volume of hydrogen gas produced. In all cases, we're going to use an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid, 10 cm cubed of bench hydrochloric acid, which provides more than enough to make sure that the magnesium reacts fully. This video can be used in conjunction with the practical sheet from rugby school, ARMG. And your teacher might ask you to calculate the relative atomic mass of magnesium given the relationship that one mole of hydrogen gas would occupy 24,000 cm cubed at this temperature and pressure. Alternatively, your teacher might ask you to calculate the volume that one mole of a gas, hydrogen gas, would occupy if the relative atomic mass of the magnesium was already known. Either way, we're going to take three results, and you may have more results uh, in the way of class results. Three different sizes of magnesium are going to be used, and three masses, and therefore three volumes of hydrogen are also going to be recorded. The experiment requires a special piece of equipment. This is called a knee joint tube. It's a special tube that is designed so that the magnesium can sit in one compartment, the hydrochloric acid in another, and they need only to meet when you want the reaction to start, enabling you to capture all of the hydrogen gas that is produced during the course of the reaction. Each time the experiment is done, please record the mass of the magnesium, which on this occasion is measured to three decimal places. Very sensitive, because the mass of magnesium determines the volume of hydrogen and we would not want to exceed 100 cm cubed, or 100 mils as this gas syringe indicates. Centimeter cubed is the same unit size as a milliliter. So the pieces of magnesium are small, and we must measure them to three places of uh, decimals. The volume of the um, hydrogen produced should be recorded at the end of each experiment, and that is although the gas syringe says milliliters should be recorded in cubic centimeters, cm cubed. Let's start then with the first smallest piece of magnesium. I will place the 10 cm cubed of hydrochloric acid into the bottom compartment of the knee joint tube. And I will measure the mass of the smallest piece of magnesium, ensuring that we're already at zero, we are at zero. And so if you'd like to record the mass of this piece of magnesium, just leave that for a second to make sure that it's steady. That's the mass of the magnesium. Okay, I will place that into the upper compartment. Make sure this is at zero. Push the bung on firmly and encourage the magnesium to fall to the bottom of the tube, which it has done. And see what volume of hydrogen gas is produced. As you can see, the magnesium is reacting quite quickly with the hydrochloric acid. There's still bubbling occurring. The rate of reaction is diminishing. We are still producing some hydrogen gas, but it is slowing up and eventually it will reach a point where there is no more magnesium left because the hydrochloric acid is in excess. Okay, if you would like to take that reading, we'll move on to the second experiment. Now at this point we must make sure that we have a steady reading and when we change over, we push the gas syringe back to zero, we can empty this out. Now we might want to clean this, but as we're using excess of hydrochloric acid, there is no harm in, for the next experiment, using uh, another 10 cm cubed of hydrochloric acid. We could have used the original, but of course some of it would 
be our magnesium chloride and that would make it a, a less fair test. So for this second experiment, let's use the second size of magnesium. Again, making sure that's at zero. Let's take the mass of the second piece of magnesium. Okay, we have that. Similar setup, we'll place it into there, making that sure that's a zero. So for the second experiment, we will encourage the magnesium to fall. There it goes. Make sure that no gas can escape. And we leave that one to, to react. Now clearly this was a bigger piece of magnesium, so we might anticipate a greater quantity of hydrogen gas and that does seem to be the case And eventually all of the magnesium has reacted and it would seem that there is no more gas being produced. So please read off that second volume reading. Okay. Sure that the reaction is finished, we take the top off, we return the gas syringe to zero once more. We can empty out again, again we won't use the same hydrochloric acid although we could, and we'll place another quantity of hydrochloric acid into the knee joint and we work with the third one checking that the balance is at zero we take the mass of the third piece of magnesium okay that is settled and once again we place that into the top Encourage that to fall to the bottom. There it goes. And we allow that reaction to occur. Once again, it's a bigger piece of magnesium, so we would anticipate a greater volume, perhaps, of the hydrogen gas, which seems to be the case. And again, you need to have a record of both the mass of the magnesium used and the, the volume. Reaction still occurring, as you can see. Just make absolutely certain it's all reacted. And if you'd like to take that reading, we've got three readings for this particular experiment.